What's happening everyone? I'm going to be changing to my summer tires in this video. Uh, well that's the first part of it at least. See I got these new general tires just like my snow tires. I'm about to put them on real quick. Alright I got all my tires out. Here you can see how nice they are. Actually these are my winter ones too. There are also general tires that I wore down from using way too long. And I bought these paint markers to color the lettering. This is going to be ricey, but kind of funny because, you know, it's going to say general. So it's not like I got Michelin racing tires or anything. I just got general tires. Yeah, I'll probably just wash these up a bit and paint them. Oh, and I got some oil and a filter, so I'll be doing that next. I'm not gonna use a jack stand, because I don't feel like it. And my e brake is good enough to hold all this weight, I think. Alright, to do these, you gotta get a 17 deep well. And then that way, you can like reach in further because these holes are pretty deep. I don't think I'll be painting these today and I definitely don't have time for an oil change. So this will be like a longer video in different parts. Oh these are fucking like bald man I fuck these up oh, big time. This was so stupid. snow tires off when winter's over or you'll be spending more money the next season and get an alignment when you need one and then while I'm over here I'm gonna spray my strut bearing because it's squeaking eh, it's way too dark rusty in there and I should fix everything about the car but I can't. Alright, I'm gonna do the back and come back. Alright, here's proof of how uh, dumb I am. See how deep this is and how no alignment that is. Here it's kind of deep but you can tell how stupid and lazy and stupid and lazy I was because that's a $60 tire. I'll probably have to buy it again next winter. Here's tire four. So with these cars you jack up right here is the uh, lift point. My rear snow tires look totally solid still so maybe I'll only have to buy two. Which is still more money than I had to spend. And this is another one that's stuck. Oh, this one's really bad. Alright, so here's what I learned. Is you take another tire and you smack it on this one to loosen it.
Alright, it's finally coming loose. Now I'm just gonna start tighten all these down by hand and try not to break any like Mike did. Alright, so I don't have time to paint my tires or really do anything. Can't change the oil because I have to leave for work in a bit. So I'll probably do this tomorrow. Alright, here's my summer tires. And I'm about to paint the Ultimax part and probably this small logo here, white. So first off I'm just going to wash it and yeah, and then just do a base layer. Alright, I just use this uh, chamois or whatever here to dry the tire off. and. I got this marker open, so now I'm just going to shake it up and prime the tip. Too bad. There's a couple like nicks where I got into the crevices. Alright, here's the turn of events. It's been like two days since I painted the tigers. And it's like April 3rd and we got snow. Lots of it. Pretty tall there. Yeah. Like a foot or something drift. So yeah, I'll do the second coat in a bit, but the first coat has stayed through all the snow and shit. I still haven't done an oil change because it's too cold. This video's taking way long to make because it's weather change. Hey y'all, so today's the 6th, and uh, my carbs got back from the shop, and I can't get it aligned because I have a bent tie rod, so that's probably going to be the next video, and that would be part of why my tires are torn. Um, yeah, got some shitty ass brake lines that are rotting and falling apart that they found, which is embarrassing but I already knew way ahead of time. Same with my um, other rusty stuff, what was it? Oh yeah, my exhaust that's held up by like fucking clothes hangers to the shifter box. So it looks rusty and it is rusty and it is ugly, but I know it's there. So yeah, I gotta do a tie rod, inner tie rod. We did the outer ones, but I'm gonna have to do that before I can get it aligned. So in a minute here, I'm gonna go do a second paint coating on the tires and then 
an oil change, which is like 700 miles overdue now, and then that'll be the end of this shitty video that took forever to make. Alright, here's my nasty car from the winter again. And you can see that the lettering stayed pretty well through all of this, but I'm just going to touch it up with the rag and then paint again. Okay, that's the second layer. It doesn't really look too great in person, but from camera distance it looks fine. Just like the marker isn't flowing too hot right now. It's really cold, so I'll probably do the rest off camera some other day. Alright y'all, April 15th. A thousand miles over my oil change. Um, way lazy, but I'm finally doing it. And I gotta go to work in 40 minutes, so letting everything heat up now. As you can see, I got no coolant because I have a leak somewhere. Um, yeah, I'm just letting this warm up now. Alright, it's heated up, got the oil draining now. I gotta go make my lunch before I have to be to work in like 40 minutes. So I'm gonna let this drain while I get some food. Alright, this video part is gonna be changing the tie rod because mine's bent and I can't get it aligned like I said so here's the tie rod inner outer uh, new boot and steering rack and here's a tool that's in standard and probably won't be much help at all all right step one is lifting the car and then taking the wheels off so here you go Jay you're gonna want an impact driver Preferably the Milwaukee Heavy Duty, because it works for me. So you just come in here and you zip them off without even loosening them. Yeah, we had like one of the long things on the back to make the tire stick out. Those are ugly. I'm never gonna finish this shit on time. This tire wear doesn't look bad compared to the snow tires yet. Are those your summer tires? Yeah. I think the next step is like loosening this thing down here. I'm gonna get kept with copyright. Yeah, so right here is a tie rod. It's a little bent, but you can't tell because I use a fisheye. And then down here is the 19 mil nut that you take off for the outer tie rod. And it's probably going to spin, so I don't know. I'm going to try and loosen it. Alright, so you want to get the nut on the threads a little bit. And then you're going to smack the shit out of this spot here with a hammer. And the tie rod will come out. Harder. You can kind of see it lifting. Yeah, he said like three hits. It is lifting. It's all fucking dusty. <laughs> so much rust. See if you can like lift it up and down now. That shit's still tight. Hmm. Why did he say hitting on the nut wouldn't work? I don't know. Hmm. You can try it maybe if you want. Yeah, just keep going a little bit more. That seems free. You're all over the place now. Alright, try, try doing that. Doing what? A nut? Just lifting it. Why wouldn't it come out? What's it stuck on? Alright, so I sprayed everything with PB. And I smacked it some more. 
so we're going to try and take off this jam nut here and then it would let this pull out from what I saw the banger too alright so I loosened this jam nut which is 22 but I don't have that so I used an adjustable wrench I just turned it uh, downwards and then that loosened it enough to pull this out so now you're going to hold this from what I saw and you count how many rotations it takes to remove it and that way your alignment will be a little close at least for a while so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen 15, 16, 17, 18, 18 and a half, right? All right, so I skipped a few parts here because it was hard, but I'm gonna take the jam nut all the way off by clipping on here and then twisting here. It wasn't really hard. And then on the boot, there's, you can see it there, there's an inner part here and then an outer part with these clips. And according to the tutorial, zip ties work pretty much as good. But I just get in there with a screwdriver and twist and pull, and it pops off. This back one, you can't really see it unless you push the boot out of the way. But you can climb up underneath here and look towards the front of the car, and you'll be able to see it. That's the same thing, just twist and pull. And then the boot should, like, come off pretty easy or something. The millimeter opening wrench can fit in between the subframe and the control arm. From here, turn the joint off, but I hate this way. It takes too damn long. It takes too damn long. Does it say that? Which way? It I doesn't say. It just says turn it so you can access the What's flat. It look like? What's happening? Is it coming out? Yeah, the other way. It's coming out. Other this way. way? Other way. Other way. Other way. Other way. Oh. Well, <laughs> this is all the way. Well, that's it's as far as it's going to come out. Yep. So you can probably access it. It's um. So you can get to this part. The not looking for it. There's no way you can fit a wrench in there. It says you're supposed to. You pick the worst outfit for this. Fucked. Yeah. That's as far as it goes. Yeah. What the fuck? You gotta get all the way back in there. Above that plate or whatever. Below it. Easy peasy. Alright. <coughs> <coughs> Now that the boot's off, you have to take off the inner tie rod. So you can get one of these kits that doesn't fit on my car because it's standard. It's basically a long ass extension you fit over the entire tie rod. And then you get one of these adapter pieces that fits over and turns it. Because this is the tie rod here. So you gotta stick the whole thing down the tube and then you grab on this and turn it to remove it but I don't have the luxury of doing that because I didn't have my tool so you gotta turn the wheel and then you climb up under here and you'll be able to see a little crack where you can turn and you'll have to go a little bit at a time alright this is inside the car here's the tie rod uh, this is the sway bar here and way in here is where you're going to fit the wrench this hole. There's a jack stand, steering knuckle. So I'm going to be getting like right in here to turn this. Hope you can see that. Oh, there it went. Yeah, this is definitely the slow way. <laughs> 
can't even fucking reach this thing. It's not gonna do anything. Is it out? Almost? Yeah. It's gonna like spray fluid all over. Is it really? No. Sick. Good shit. Alright, so here's the old tie rod and then the new one. You can see how bent it is. And that's because I broke a ball joint and dragged my tire down the road. So that makes sense why there's this big curve here. Right now Jack is just threading it back in by hand tightening it. Maybe not. <laughs> if he can line it up. Just putting it back into the rack. The boot will go on afterwards. And I'm going to curl my ass back up under there and tighten it. Alright, we just tightened this. I just went under there again and grabbed it with a wrench. Which, by the way, we had to go to Jesse's house and borrow because I didn't have an adjustable wrench big enough. But now you're going to put the new boot on. It's only five bucks, so I don't see why you wouldn't get a new one. Alright, so I just slid the boot on. There's a hole for a grease fitting that you can't really see. In the tutorial, the guy like cut it and put a white mark, but I just did it by hand by laying in the position that I was in before and looking up at it. So yeah, there's the inner tie and the outer tie from earlier. I just use zip ties because they're thin enough. And then you're going to thread this um, jam nut back on, and then you grab the outer tie rod and you put it around 18 and a half times like I did before. Alright, so here's the tie rod that's back installed. Oh, I forgot the light under there. Um, so yeah, you pull the jam nut up here, then you're going to put the outer tie rod on by spinning it the same number of times you took it off to get the alignment close. Then you bring the jam nut back close and you tighten this bottom one really tight. So now it's pretty good, but you're going to take it to an alignment shop to get it done correctly.